This is the Bullwinkle oil platform, as it was being towed out to be installed 1,400 feet underwater over the Green Canyon oil fields in the Gulf of Mexico. This $500 million steel platform has been used to produce over 120 million barrels of oil, reaching 50,000 barrels and over $3 million per day at its peak. And even with such impressive stats, there are other rigs that produce more than this, some producing over 100,000 barrels a day. Bullwinkle is a platform oil rig designed for depths of up to 1,700 feet. These steel frameworks are anchored to the ground and have a series of drills that operate in several directions from the platform's base. In deeper waters, different structures are required. Used in waters 3,000 feet deep, the tall, narrow structure of a compliant tower gently sways with the wind and waves. For ultra-deep waters beyond 5,000 feet, it's no longer economically or physically feasible to use tall steel structures to support rigs. Instead, several floating rig designs are used, each using anchors or computer-controlled positioning systems to keep them in place. These designs enable drilling at extreme depths and access to abundant oil reserves. Also operating in ultra-deep waters are drill ships. These massive ships are equipped with a drill in the center that can reach similar depths as floating rigs. To stay in place during operations, drill ships primarily use dynamic positioning systems that sense wind and wave movement and automatically activate thrusters and propellers to counter movements that would affect drilling. This is one of the most expensive forms of oil rigs, but it makes up for it in its mobility. It can quickly travel to various oil wells in both shallow and ultra-deep waters to complete dozens of jobs that a floating rig couldn't. The purpose of these enormous structures is to collect as many barrels of oil as possible, but the business often fluctuates with the volatile price of oil, and not every company can produce it for the same amount. At the 2022 oil price of around $80 per barrel, nearly all producers can profit from their operations. But in times of low prices, like in 2020, when each barrel was around $40, only around half of the operators were profiting. In cases like this, production drops and global inventories of oil deplete, causing more demand and eventual price increases. But during these downturns, companies still have to maintain the massive investments required for business for future years. Even aside from the day-to-day -day operations and maintenance required for an oil rig, it can cost up to $50 million in months of time just to map a potential reserve. It can then cost another $100 million to drill an initial exploratory well to locate the proven reserves and prepare for production drilling. This is all before a production rig is even constructed, which can cost another $200 million to $1 billion. Although these costs aren't all paid at once, they must be considered before the company can begin drilling, and if the price of oil dips for a year or two, issues arise where companies are forced to spend more than they generate or to delay the development of new drilling sites, which would hurt it when oil prices rise again. But before a rig can even be built, an oil reserve must first be found. To find deposits sealed underground, oil producers use seismic survey vessels to map formations under the ocean floor in hopes of discovering any anomalies. They do this by sending pulses of air or water toward the sea floor and capturing the resulting seismic pulses that bounce off the subsurface. Digital maps are then created and analyzed by geologists to determine if there are oil reserves or not, and which ones make sense to pursue. Once a drilling site has been located, companies use mobile drilling rigs including drill ships to perform exploratory drilling to find the proven reserves before installing an expensive permanent rig. Temporary exploratory wells are then drilled, and core samples are extracted from the reservoirs. If producers are happy with the oil quality and quantity from the deposit, they invest in a production rig that can be used for 10 to 20 years. A complicated drilling process is carried out to safely reach the oil deposit without polluting the ocean or causing an explosion on the platform. This process can take weeks or months to reach the deposit, and once oil is finally struck, the well is immediately closed off. This is seemingly counterproductive, but the goal of oil drillers is to control the flow of pressurized oil and gas. Through this method, they can extract the exact amount they want through whatever method is most efficient for the status of the deposit. Once the crude oil has been extracted, oil drillers can then sell barrels of it to oil refineries, or in the case for larger companies, refine it themselves to separate the mixture into usable products such as transportation fuels and feedstock used for things like paint and plastic. 
At this point, profitability can be calculated as all producers use barrels of oil for their production measurements. Although the price of oil is volatile, oil and gas companies can relatively control costs in the short term. The largest costs for most oil companies are capital costs and are the reason as to why price volatility is so dangerous. These costs are related to assets like the oil rigs and equipment used to find, drill, and process oil. In an industry where investments typically take four to eight years to generate a profit, if oil prices fall, these multi-hundred million dollar rigs become deactivated, providing no money for the company that is still paying off the investment. They also will not have the cash flow required to explore new deposits. The current deposits will eventually deplete, and it takes months to years to develop a new location. So if producers are not actively exploring, they will not be prepared in better market conditions. But even in good market conditions, these are still the highest category of costs for an oil company. Operating costs, the actual day-to-day -day costs required to lift oil and natural gas to the surface are slightly less. These kinds of costs include disposal of water, remedial well work to repair failures, chemical and other treating services, and regulatory maintenance for the wells. Administrative and transportation costs are associated with operating the business, paying personnel, and transporting crude oil to refineries. Taxes are related to the various taxes and royalties paid on each barrel of oil produced, and varies widely by country, some paying little to none and others paying over 40%. One of the largest offshore oil producers is Shell, which produces over 2 million barrels of oil a day across its 30 offshore rigs. Massive producers like this manage every stage of oil production, from exploration to selling final products like gasoline. But even for such a large company, it cannot do it alone and it relies on dozens of contractors to build and maintain rigs and equipment. Although Shell fully owns certain rigs, it leases the majority of its others, providing money and oversight to drilling contractors that usually charge a daily rate. A large partner of Shell is Transocean, one of the biggest drilling contractors which owns 39 offshore rigs. Transocean builds these rigs and leases them out to customers like Shell, who pay a daily fee to use them. Customers can also provide capital for specific rig designs to be built based on the unique requirements for certain oil deposits. In 2017, one of Transocean's semi-submersibles was awarded a $286 million contract to extract from 22 wells over 33 months. This translates to a daily payment of just under $300,000 for Shell whenever that rig is active on one of the listed wells. A small price to pay when Shell is generating tens of thousands of barrels every day from the operation. But the largest oil company trumps all others, controlling 16% of the world's oil reserves, more than Shell, ExxonMobil, Chevron, and BP combined. Aramco produces well over 10 million barrels of oil every day at some of the lowest production costs in the industry, making it the most profitable company in the world by nearly double the earnings of tech giants like Apple and Google. Aramco, which supplies 10% of the world's oil, can produce for cheaper because there is so much of it in Saudi Arabia, where the company originates from. Although it has 40 plus offshore rigs, the majority of the oil Aramco produces comes from shallow waters or much more accessible onshore rigs. The oil reserves in this region are also massive and very little exploration is needed to have a consistent flow of deposits. There are also no royalties to pay for land or mineral rights as the company is state owned, contributing further to the low cost of production. The accessibility of oil in regions like this is a large part as to why offshore drilling exists. The reason oil producers go through so much effort to create such massive structures in dangerous oceans is because their land regions have very limited oil reserves or their onshore reserves have already been tapped. Without going out to the waters, oil would be extremely high priced and hard to obtain as only a few countries could produce it economically.